Johnson Viking 2. Now this one came up here from Cleveland. The fellow bought it at a swap meet. He's only applied power, but he never attempted to transmit, which is a good thing. Let me show you. All right, let's give her an inspection, like I always do. You can see she's pretty much all original looking on the front panel. The paint's in good shape. The only thing I see is that here, somebody has changed the stock mic jack out with a quarter inch phonotype. It's kind of a typical thing you see on these. Nobody likes that old two conductor connector they had. Take a look inside. Chassis looks pretty clean. All the tubes are present. And if you look between these rectifiers, you'll see it's got the little red stamp. So this was a factory built unit. I did notice that one of the output tubes has been replaced and it looks like there's a dark spot right there. So maybe it's been arcing. I don't know. We'll find that out later. So now for the fun, let's take a look at the bottom. So to prepare you, if you take a look at the back, you'll see there's been a little bit of labeling there, which is no big deal. But over here, there's a whole bunch of nice new jacks. So that tells you that something's going on underneath. Let's go down there and take a look. For a bottom side guided tour, I've tilted the transmitter back on one end so we can kind of sweep from one side to the other. So here is your crystal selector switch and associated circuitry. Everything here looks great. Good old Johnson factory work, okay? Over here, you can see the filter caps and they're old, dried up type, need to be replaced, no big deal. However, if you look in here, you can see that somebody already did replace these and they left bare wires like a good inch long right close to your AC input. So that's kind of a hazardous situation. Here you can see the other one that's been spliced into an old capacitor lead, also bare. Not too good of a practice there, but anyway, we're pulling all that out and I'm going to remove these caps and put in new ones before I ever apply power. Okay. So let's work our way down to the center of the transmitter and see what else we can find. Okay, the next thing that catches my eye is this is your modulation bias adjust resistor. Okay, should be a 20K resistor, 50 watt. But this one obviously has been swapped out in its past and whoever did it couldn't find the right value. So it appears as though maybe it's a 10K because if you look here, there's another 10K in series with it, and the slider is way advanced, indicating to me that he tried to come up with the right value by putting this guy in. And you can see it's kind of just floating there. Once again, deathly close to this mechanical piece here, so you could get some arcing. So, yep, we're going to put in a new 20K resistor and fix that up. So now here is where it really gets good, okay? You see this coax coming up here? This coax in a stock Viking 2 should come up. It should be RG8 coax and it goes to this rear SO239. That's your RF output. Oh no, not in this one. In this one, we've added a relay. So the coax now comes up, hits the relay, and from there, it comes out with just straight conductor wires, right? So somebody was trying to do maybe some TR switching for the antenna internal and not use a Dow key. Well, nice idea, but if you think about this, your RF comes up and it's hitting all these bare conductor wires and just radiating all through the bottom of your transmitter. It's going to get into every tuned circuit. It's going to get into your audio section. This thing's going to be a nasty splatter box. So I thought when I saw this relay that possibly the new mic jack up front, which is kind of buried under there, okay, I thought that that had pushed to talk switching in it. And that's why somebody would have put in the different style jack to key the relay, right? Well, it's not. They only used one conductor on this thing. So it's pretty much serving the same purpose as the old original jack. 
it's just a quarter inch one instead. Okay, you got me why that is, but what really freaks me out is what is keying that relay? And if you follow this line back here, it actually goes to the same switched AC that would normally switch an external Dow key relay. So somebody just didn't want to deal with the Dow key, so they did this instead. So what a bummer, huh? A factory built Viking 2. It's had some modifications, okay? So before I even dare power this thing up and try to transmit, at a minimum, I'm gonna put in some new filter caps and take care of those shock hazards. I'm gonna to have to remove this RF switching, get that relay out and hook up the coax to the rear jack like it was stock, all right? Because I don't really want to get radiated. That's why I use the dummy load, and that's why you're supposed to have shielded cable going out, right? You don't want the energy in the radio, you want it to leave. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll get all that repaired, and then we'll power it up and see if this thing transmits. It might just do that. So what's the best approach for this? wire cutters, right? None of this is documented. I'm not going to keep it. So it's just going to be removed. As soon as I get this all out of my way, I know how it was wired stock. We'll return to stock. I'll check things, make sure it's safe, and then we'll apply power. So all the items of immediate concern have been repaired. I've got the new filter caps in placed all that wiring so there's nothing exposed. We have the new coax in with the shroud on the rear. I still have some hardware to put in, but that's all secure. Now stop the radiation of the RF from getting into the radio. So at this point, I feel pretty confident it's safe to turn it on. So this is the initial test. Bring up the filaments. I have a Drake W4 watt meter into a dummy load. I found D104 with the same type plug that was on the front of this guy. So hopefully everything will come to life. I'm on 80 meters right now. Got grid current. It's a good sign. Next we'll check. Apply plate. See if she'll dip. Right, I'm still in CW mode. Looks like the roller inductor is a little dirty, but she is dipping. I'm getting about 60 watts out. Remember I showed you that one uh, 6146 that didn't look too healthy? That might be why. Anyway, she's firing up no smoke. That's good. Let's go over to phone. So my modulator current is pretty high, it's like 150 mils, so we're not going to run it very long, I just want to see if I can get any audio out of this thing. Nope, no audio, bummer. Okay, so we got high modulator current, no audio passing through the modulator section, but there was that work on the bias resistor down there. Maybe something in that area is defective. But the good thing is, is that the Viking 2 fired up with no smoke. So we're, we're getting there. Well, I may have discovered why we're getting absolutely no modulation. If you look at this input jack that somebody put in, this over here is supposed to be the hot lead, not this one. And we have a broken ground runner, so this is completely miswired. Now remember, when the guy bought this thing at the swap meet, he was told that it worked fine. Hmm. So I've temporarily repaired that microphone input wiring just so I can see if there's any audio getting through the section. I'm monitoring on the scope on the primary to the interstage transformer. Got the old D104 here. I'm just going to talk into it and see what we get on the scope. So there we are. Not too good. Pretty darn low. So, we either have a bad interstage transformer, which could be, or more than likely, 
all the resistors and the caps in the preamp section of the Viking 2 are bad, which I find in about every one of them. So it's time to fix the audio. So I'm going to start first by correcting the modulation current, get this mess out of here, put in a new resistor, set that, rebuild the audio, and go from there. So the good news for the Viking 2, it didn't go up in a ball of fire when I turned it on, okay? Now yes, I took some precautions. Those bad filter caps, the other little shock hazards that we saw lingering underneath of that chassis, it is a must to open and inspect your radio before you apply power, okay? So the bad thing is, it's probably going to cost as much to repair it as it was to buy it. There's a lot of work involved here. I'm pretty much going to have to go through this thing inch by inch. It's just full of issues. But when I'm done, it'll be another great performing Johnson Viking 2. So my word of advice, you go to a swap meet, you see this big beautiful Johnson transmitter and you say, man, I really want that. Take the time to carefully inspect it, right? Look in the top, take a flashlight, look in the bottom. Look at the back. If you see a bunch of jacks on there that shouldn't be, more than likely it's modified and you're buying a project. Buyer beware.